Hello everybody. Today is Monday and we are going to paint pansies. So the pansy that I posted was this one which is very very bright and we have reds and yellow and cadmium um, yellow which is more like an orange yellow purples a little bit of green but also I was experimenting with different colors and different medium so this is watercolor pencil and this one is I'll show you which one this is this guy which is Prisma colors one of these covered with the Prisma colors that if you make them wet and you can gently rub them on the paper you actually creating really interesting texture now with the Darwin which is another watercolor pencil it's this guys um, it's much easier to and this is dripping because I just did it it's much easier to do dry pencil and then wet it afterwards this is just old-fashioned tubes of watercolor so you can do very similar things and this is also the same thing this is wet on wet and this is more between dry wet on dry and wet on wet so i was kind of playing around to see what will be the fastest and easiest thing to do so we're going to concentrate a little bit more on the bright one but you can always change the color you can make it more bluish more purplish darker um, pansies are so cool and if you have um, gotten this from Facebook what I did with that is I printed um, shrinked it down to fit to the page and also made the page to be a five by seven and instead of using a transfer paper or cookie sheets to make it transparent I traced this and used a backlight or a window and traced it on the back so I create two pen pencil marks and then I made myself a little kind of um, trio of three flowers and added few leaves now pansy leaves could be a little bit more pointy uh, but they have soft edges and the sharp edges are usually not visible when the flowers are sitting on the top and I added a, a bulb which is super super easy so I'm going to show you this I'm gonna lower the camera down I hope everybody is doing good okay so now I can kind of see what I'm doing and pencil pencils the watercolor pencils it was super super easy now what happened to my Prisma color when I start making it wet I cracked the wood and that was absolutely expected because what I was doing is dipping my pencil in water and then painting with it and I'll show you how cool that is just transferring um, on the paper and this is not even a watercolor paper so it's really cool but you might draw in your pencils so use them fast <laughs> but what I did is I have two different flowers one is a little bit narrow one is a little bit more open and once I trace them on the back I actually end up with four flowers because this is more pointing to the left and this is reversed in a way so I picked different flowers and I traced them and because I have pencils on both sides that transferred to my paper and after that I went over with the pencil so you guys can see it and I dirty my um, page with the brown and that's okay because I'm going to just take as much as possible and this is one of the things with the pencil I could have lifted that with normal watercolor but with the pencil 
I probably will use an eraser later and probably that's going to be much better than me trying to make it wet. But I'll just leave it for now alone. Who knows, maybe I'll use even that spot for something. Create some element there. So, I have one, two, three flowers and I made a few leaves. How I did the little bulb was pretty much two leaves sideways, one half a circle, and then another one on the bottom. So that was pretty much the bulb. Now for the leaf, you can create a normal leaf, just to be simple, and then you round this corner and you add a little bit more of instead of sharp ends you do this little roundies and this is gonna be your and that plant actually ends up with little sharp ends so this leaf is really long and then the pansy comes around and hides most of it but we are ready to paint because hopefully you guys have sketched it so the easiest thing and the more controlled way to do this and I am going to go with so this one looks more like pinkish reddish orangey so I'm gonna simplify it we're gonna leave that purple in the center I'll probably change the purple a little bit tone it down but I'm gonna keep that bright bright pink I mean pink um, red so I'm going to start with the lightest color so that's going to be my cadmium yellow, which is like orangey. And I am going to use not drapey brush, wet brush. And I'm going to start, if you notice here, the orange is kind of in the center. We have a little bit of red around. These four leaves are a little bit different. So I'm going to start in the center and I'm going to go kind of lines and all my lines are pointing towards the center and I'm gonna go and do this to all three flowers now this one is pointing that way so my bottom leaf is right here and it's hiding so it's not completely exposed and this one here I'm gonna go around I have more lines, pencil marks, so if you're doing watercolor, take as much as possible from those pencil marks. Because your watercolor is transparent. So what I'm going to do is wash my brush. So I have a clean brush, and I'm going to go in and gently wash it again and dab it on the paper. So it's not drapey and I'm gonna add that cloud around this will barely have some but I have to make sure my brush doesn't pick too much color because every time I go over an area that has a lot of watercolor it will pick that color and my brush will not be clean so I'm gonna start here so you cannot quite do that with the pencils, but it was a really interesting effect. So um, it was not getting mixed very well with the water. And that was the part that was bothering me. So this is my bottom leaf. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create an orangey red or I'm mixing my cadmium yellow with a little bit of red. So I'm making it kind of like orange and I am going to go here and add the same thing. So it's almost like fanning it out. Every line is facing or is pointing towards that center. And I'm creating these lines coming out. Am I touching the center? Um, no, because I am going to have that darker color there. Let's get a little more red. 
I went a little too much there. Just touching that wet paper gives me enough. And this guy has this one right here and right here. Now, since I did already three completely different um, experiments with different watercolor, different techniques, this will be a little bit different than that, but you guys are going to get the idea. Because you can do it wet on wet. And I'll be looking at the time. So if, if we have a little time, I'll show you the wet on wet on one petal or one a flower. We'll see what happens. Because this is more wet on wet. And what I'm doing here is more dry, wet on dry. So now I'm going to take my clean brush and turn your paper to be comfortable to your hand. So I'm going to go in and you see how I'm moving from center out and I'm stealing some of that paint. Is it going to mix with another area but it created a really beautiful cloud. So I'm going to clean my brush and get a little more water on it because I want this very, very light cloud towards the edge. Did the same. So clean my brush, dabbed it on the paper tissue, and I'm going to go inside here, and I'm going to move in and push my brush in. And by the way, the brush that I'm using, it's number six. It's a Van Gogh, and I ordered a few more of them because I'm really liking this brush. So I will share that with you next time. Oh, why am I dirtying my brush? I need clean brush, and starting with the wet from outside, and then kind of stealing a little bit of that paint, softening the edges, not going and touching the center, leaving it alone okay i don't know why i'm going again to the paint starting from the outside activating that paint pushing it in and this is, was so much easier because my paint was still wet and now i'm getting to an area where i left it for a little longer but it's still going to work i'm just going to work a little harder on that and just make sure I'm clouding that area, softening that edge, because you see how sharp that edge is. So now I'm, I'm adding wet here, and with the tip of the brush, I'm gently, I'm not trying to destroy the brush, I'm gently pushing and moving the paint, not all the way to the edge, because I want that paint to get there by itself. So practically, I'm pushing the paint towards the center, but gently, because I made that edge a little wet, the paint is moving gently that direction too. And that's part of that watercolor fun technique that you can do. And with wet on wet, pretty much that happens a lot faster. I think I'm gonna try to do that so I might do partially few leaves so you get the idea to add maybe a few green leaves to your flower or you can just leave it as it is. Um, this is kind of like a fake leaves. I barely added a little bit of that scallopy edge. Um, just added a little bit of green there to be present and here I have a little bit more of the way they look. go in do the same thing I know I'm picking up too much paint where I don't want it so I have plenty of water on the edge and I'm gonna work this area a little bit more because like I said we waited too long to touch up but do you see how beautiful the paint is getting distributed so this is wet brush with paint on a dry paper technique. 
which gives you a little bit more control. Once this dries, we are going to add the center. So I am going to get this little guy in here. And what I'm going to do is I am going to start with the yellow. And I'm going to start yellow orangey right here. Then I'm going to steal that reddish orange. And I'm going to start it from outside. Clean, not very wet brush. I am going to marry this together. And a lot of times I'll just leave it alone. Whatever happened here, it happened. The clouds that the watercolor is creating, they will be beautiful. So I'll leave it alone. And later on when that dries, I'll come and add maybe a line or two to differentiate between the two petals or the petals that have folded into each other. So we visually can make the difference or we know something is going on there. So how to create a fun green. So what I'm using is it's kind of like a light green. Let me move this just a little bit on the side. It's a light green and I'm going to add to my mixing area. I'm going to steal a little bit of the cadmium yellow and I'm going to mix it in. Now I made it even more lighter, so we're going to test this. Let me get a scrap paper and always test your paint. So this is a beautiful green, right? What other color can we put in the green? This will be ochre. And if I put my ochre into the green, let me show you the green that we're going to create. Do you see this beautiful green? So it's a little darker. It doesn't stand out that much, but it's really, really pretty. So I am going to use those two greens. So I didn't just use the green coming from the tube, but I mixed green with the cadmium yellow. So it was a lighter green with a little bit of orangey yellow and also added a ochre to it. Now, if I add another color, I can go in and add a little bit of brown. Let me mix a little more green in it. And then what we're gonna have is a little bit darker version of that. So it's like a brownish brain and you see that's why I'm testing because it's a little bit too brown it's too green so I have to find my happy medium there it is so this and those two so these are the two colors I want to use and this one none of this so have yourself a scrap paper close by and it's better if it's a watercolor paper this is a printer paper so that's not good to test my colors because the texture kind of changes the look of the color but since i have mixed this paint a little bit early and i was happy with what happened i'm gonna take water back to my green and orange and now my color is very, very transparent. So I have a lot of water. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in. This is way too dark because I want to just run over with green, almost like a green water. And I'm trying not to touch my pansies. And I'm going to run over with the green. Now I'm going to do one leaf at a time. So we're changing the technique from wet on dry to wet on wet. I'm going to go to the darker color and I'm going to just drop in and kind of move little lines towards the center and leave them there. I'm going to get a little more brown in here and just add just a little bit on some of them darkness not everywhere so do you see how this is a little bit harder to manipulate but we still can so i'm going to go back in and i might take parts of this off or move them around 
so you can still have pretty good control. I feel like I'm more in control here than wet on wet. I'm gonna take clean brush and I'm gonna run it through the center and then I'm gonna run it on to the side. So I'm creating a little bit of a lighter area. So I'm gonna move to another leaf. This is it, that's what I want to do with the leaves. Don't wanna take too much from the flower. So the first layer will be semi-transparent green and this is a partial leaf so it has like two scallop piece here and then just filling in the area and when this dries we can add details with our brush so we're not gonna use too much water and then I'm going to add the darker green and push it around. Since I have a very little area, I'm just going to leave it the way it is. Add a little bit of that brown, brownish green, and leave it alone. And once it starts drying, do you guys see how beautiful those clouds look? And this is the area where I lifted, picked up some of the paint with a wet brush. I kind of picked it up, so I left a little line in the center to kind of represent the veins of the leaf. Doing the same thing here, but I'm gonna erase a little bit more. And especially this guy here. Let me see if I can pick up enough of this pencil, brown pencil here. If I can, I might create some sort of a cloudy look around my pansy. So even if you make a mistake or something happened, an accident, just make it a good accident. Do something with it. Think outside the box. So I'm going to do semi-transparent green and I'm going to run this over. And you can barely see it. Like, I think I need a little bit more. And now, I'm gonna go back to a little bit darker color, but I'm running out of it. So I'm gonna mix a little more. So I'm getting my light green, the orangey yellow, and ochre, mixing it. I think I need a little more green. Experiment with your colors and maybe brown doesn't seem like a color you want to put inside a green, but it might give you a really, really cool greenish color that you might fall in love with. So experiment and see what happens. So I added the lighter green, didn't add as much. Going back to the brown, and I'm just gonna add a little bit of that brown and leave it alone. So in the beginning, it looks a little bit uh, more like this, and when it starts drying, it softens even more. And if it doesn't, I'll show you what we're gonna do. So I'm gonna go back in with the semi-transparent color. So I'm taking paint, I'm gently touching the water and dabbing it on the napkin so my green is barely visible, it's barely on there. Now what I notice is I forgot one of the petals. So I cannot do this right now, I'm gonna wait for later because I just put the green here. And I'm gonna do this green here too. even if all right let's not rush because we want this to be wet so I'm gonna take the ochre green and yellow I'm gonna drop it in drop it in here taking a little bit of the brownish green So it's not just brown, it's not just green. All right, so 
this is good right here I'm gonna add this little guy connecting it and also I'm gonna just run my brush over this part now this is the center of the leaf I have this side too so I'm going to change the color make it a little bit lighter a little bit lighter so more like orangey green and I'm gonna run it and leave kind of a white barely visible edge in between do you guys see it now I'm gonna go back to my greens and I'm gonna just add, add my greens let's get a little bit of the brown and I'm gonna add a little bit of that brown right on the edge here same right here not too much okay so do you see how this cloud is more soft than not than what we have here and it's almost dry so if that happens and you want to have a little bit more of that I'm gonna just go in and again with semi-transparent green I'm gonna go over this area and gently smooth it out and that's it so and I'm gonna leave it alone because once it starts drying it's going to give me something very similar now what is missing my lift from the paper so I'm lifting part of that water and of course some of the color goes with it so I'm lifting part of that to kind of have a very similar petals or leaves okay so the one that I missed is right here so I'm gonna go back in and I'm gonna create my orangey and again pointing towards the center so we know where is the center even though that leaf is way behind there I still that's a little bit too orange still want to point towards that center so do you see what I did all of my lines connected almost to a point now I'm gonna just take clean wet brush but not drippy wet and I'm gonna make the outside wet and I'm gonna just go in and out and take some of that color with me and bring it to the edge gently because I don't want that edge to be too strong now this those pansies and this pansy look different absolutely and this was probably an hour ago and they all look different I feel like every time I do something I do it a little bit different so this one was wet on wet and I'll try to do one for you so you can see the difference and this was more wet on dry so I have a little bit more control now we have dry area and I'm going to try to mix my purple now to mix a good purple you want to have magenta with your blues and let's pull some of this I'm gonna have to clean my palette after that and of course do we want to try this color before we put it on this beautiful pansies yes so this looks like it's going to work so I'm going to start again with semi-transparent now we do have a center I am not gonna touch that center but I'm going to go around and add a few lines and this one points this way and this one points that way so I'm gonna add a few lines of that purple wash my brush and I'm gonna go in between those lines with my clean brush so I'm kind of softening that edge and I'm creating that first layer for my color it's almost like what we did to the leaves but I was trying to leave more 
space in between because that will help me. So if you see how I'm turning my paper around is just to make it easy on my hand. And also I'm trying not to go over the painting. And this is it now. Much softer, much lighter, bolder. So you can do either way. Now I'm gonna have to wait for this to dry the purple part, but I'm gonna go in with some of that orange and I'm going to add a little bit of the edge and kind of go around and add not a smooth petal, but a little bit of crinkles in those petals. I'm gonna go in here and I'm not going all the way wiggly wiggly I'm skipping some areas maybe I'll bring in a little bit just where it needs it I'm gonna those two seem like they're just two together so I'm going to create a little line here and separate them so do you see how that happened same thing here and now this does not look like two petals anymore. So I'm going to take even a little bit more red and make sure I separate them. And a lot of times when I'm painting, I'm trying to hold the brush so, so light that I drop it. So be careful if you do that. And I'm gonna go and do this part here too. And I leave sometimes a little bit of the white. I'll bring bring this close to the camera so you can see. And that will be here. Do you have to do this part? You don't have to. You can leave it where we were two seconds ago. But I'll bring it close up so you can see how I added a little bit more of a detail. So I'm going to wash my brush gently, dab some of that so I still have that dark paint in and I'm going to go in and bring some lines towards that center. They are barely visible but they're there. And make sure you bring them towards the center. So position yourself in a way that it's easy for your hand to just bring things in. And with that's pretty much just gentle touch, barely visible. It is there, but it's not pocking you in your eyes. Going back to my purple, now I'm going to add a little bit more purple and I'm going to test to see how dark I am. I'm too dark, so I'm going to take some of the paint out and touch the napkin so I'm not loaded with too much water. And I'm going to go back in here and barely touching the end. Turn it around. The side petals need maybe one or two lines. The top one, this one that's hiding completely, I'm leaving it alone. This one that shows a little more, I'll add. So do you see the little lines in the center? They are very transparent, but a tiny bit darker than that wash that I did original, originally from the beginning. And we have way too much white, especially on the yellow area. So I'm going to take a yellow a tiny bit. So the cadmium oil, which is already an orange, I'm going to take that with bringing slightly orange to it so it's kind of a color between 
orange and cadmium yellow so it's slightly darkened take as much as the water off my brush so what I do is I actually will point my brush and touch the tip of it barely to the paper because I know I have already taken a lot of the water off but I barely want anything on this because it needs to be very subtle and I'm gonna do the same effect what I did on the outside of the orange parts reddish orange I'm going to do it to this yellow ducky color here. And I'm going to bring some lines in. And next week, we are going to do another butterfly. And I'm going to post that traceable. And I'm going to add a little bit of orange right on the bottom of this guy here. And since I have that orange, I'm going to add a little water. I'm going to just run it on some of the leaves. What I do with this is I'm kind of bringing the whole picture together. Now I'm going to go in here. Wrong color. So mixing my green again and taking some of this white away so in the beginning i was trying to keep things a little bit more separate now i can clean up my edges i can bring things slightly in if there is too much white i'll bring that in but i have to bring it in a way that it's not standing out so if it stands out too much i'm gonna wipe my brush and soften the edge so, faking it completely, and running this around, taking a wet, clean, wet brush, and I'm going to go over some of those white areas. Just going over will mix some of that color that it's there, but ever so slightly. Same with the yellow. So using what I already have on the paper and this area was wet so did you see what happened how my green moved into my yellow and I'm gonna just try to push it away and if it doesn't listen I'm gonna take a napkin and dab it right there but it did it worked so I think I'm good except this thing that bothers me here so I'm gonna get a little bit of Poker. and I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna add a little ochre to the edge a little bit darker brown too and not on all the sides but just on the side that I have this little screw up I'm gonna try to fix it make it invisible Taking wet brush and all my edges, I'm gonna just spread the lava around. Take a little more brown, and I'm gonna just drop a little brown here and there. Dab it with a clean brush on top. So what I'm creating is kind of a similar effect of that boo boo so now i have some sort of a filler i guess and what's missing our center is missing and because our flower is so subtle we are going to do the same thing now i'm taking very very light yellow and i'm gonna run it right in a almost triangle in the center is coloring in that triangle and I'm gonna get a little bit of that green and plop it right in the center of the triangle and it's gonna start mixing with part of the yellow because I'm trying to touch it but I'm not gonna overdo this part a little bit of white left I'm gonna take a little bit of my purple here and just 
take away some of that white. But I do like the white left here. So this is it. This is this was more wet on dry, which means wet brush, wet paint on dry paper versus wet on wet. So I am going to show you, but this is pretty cool. More con control. So I have a lot of lines here comparing this. So I'm going to move this to the side and I am just going to sketch a real fast a pansy. So what do we have for the pansy? Kind of a triangle. So obviously I'm making it a little bit too pronounced. But soften the edge of the triangle. Then you have two petals kind of on the side and I'm curving them and then one on the bottom which actually stands on the front and two on the back and sometimes the way back is hiding almost completely and you see four petals but practically they have five. Taking my gum eraser making it just like this running it over the paper so I'm not scrubbing my paper and what we're going to do is we're going to do just one petal, wet on wet. And I'm going to try to keep it similar to this so you kind of can see how that happens. So I'm going to create that yellow area, but first I'm adding my wet to that petal. So I'm doing that bottom petal. And I'm going to take my orangey yellow and I'm gonna just drop it right here and I'm just gonna push slightly out and then I'm going gently to move maybe some if it's sitting a little bit too much on some areas I'm gonna just slightly move it around but I'm gonna leave it alone so this is pretty much what happens with wet on wet very fast everything goes really fast so I'm going to do the same thing with the orange part. Now I have to be careful not to touch the two petals that are wet. But I'm getting, and I already did, but that's okay. Those things happen. I'm going to get orangey red. And I'm going to drop this in here. So you're really dropping the paint and letting the paint have kind of fun. I will help a little and leaving it alone so it will create more of this cloudy areas and then on the end I added few little spots dots and just a little bit more details but I do love using wet on dry more than wet on wet. I feel like less in control here and more in control here. But even saying this, my leaves were completely done by wet on wet. So that doesn't mean I will never do it. It's just certain parts. I will prefer to go more this wet on dry than this dry on uh, wet on wet. So do you see what's happening with with the color. Now you can see how much the paper is taking different shapes because first that paper is not a heavy heavy paper. This one is much much heavier paper than this. But that's kind of like my practice um, practice sketchbook. So I see parts are not getting enough paint. So I'm going to move it a little bit or add more water but pretty much this is it now I, it will take much longer for me to go and add the rest because I'm gonna have to make sure this is dry completely before I go to my center with the purple or with the greens because I'll have a lot more wet area and when they touch things happen so I'm gonna add this one too and it's beautiful, it creates beautiful cloudy areas here. And let's add a little bit of dark, drop a color 
right here so you can see how that works. Let's drop a color and drop a color. So you have that happening when you have wet on wet. You can drop a color and that color just disperses around and just makes beautiful things happen. So let's do this part. So don't add too much water, like puddles and puddles of water. But when my paper starts curving around, a lot of the water starts going to certain area. So luckily, this is almost the center of my petal and it's working very, very well. I'm going to add that orange here. And move it around. So do you see how that creates that cloud, cloudy area? Very similar to this. And kind of like this, but not really. This is totally controlled. And now I can take a little bit of the dark color and just drop it and it'll create a cloud. Let's get a little of that super dark burgundy red. Why not? So this is when you can drop a color and see what happens and it creates a beautiful, beautiful cloud around. But I'll leave it here because I think probably the time is way past 1.30. So lunch is over. <laughs> and I will see you next week. And next week we are going to paint, and I'll post the traceable for that. We are going to do this beautiful butterfly. And this is more like the wet on dry technique so I needed a lot more control but on certain areas I went with a very very light color before I started adding some of the details so I hope you enjoyed this one and I will see you next week and bye everybody all right I hope you have a good week